Learning how to replace the safety valve on a Hawking's pressure cooker. Uh, this is a 3 liter model, uh, but the principle is the same for the different size pressure cookers. Now, why would you want to replace the valve uh, as a regular uh, maintenance on, on the pressure cooker? Um, that's one of the beauties of these cookers is that you are, are able to do that um, so that you can uh, pro prohibit it from failing on you. The manual doesn't specify when they should be replaced. Um, it's going to depend a lot on how often you use the pressure cooker and how it's maintained while you're using it. Uh, for example, uh, taking the lid off right after it has released the pressure, uh, but while it's still uh, hot, it's a good idea not to put that under cold water or running water because uh, that will cause this uh, the valve on here to, to weaken. So if you've done that quite a bit, if you um, uh, haven't been paying attention, you, you, you do put it in, into cold water and, and, and that would uh, cause this valve to sort of lose some of its life expectancy. The manual uh, has a very good description of, of, on page 25 of how to replace the safety valve. And they mentioned here that uh, for major repairs, uh, they take it to a service center, uh, but they, they feel that it's perfectly acceptable to do this replacement yourself. So what you need to look for then to determine when it's time to have uh, the, the safety valve replaced. I use this pressure cooker uh, as a vegetarian. I, I use it pretty much every other day of the week and I've had this particular valve on here for about a year. So I'd like to show that to you and you can see, just take a look at the divot there, the depth of that uh, bowl-like shape there on that valve. So this is pretty heavy use after about a year. On this lid, I use this one maybe once a week, uh, maybe twice a month, perhaps, over the year. Uh, actually, this one is, is the original valve, and you could see, uh, let's see if I can tilt it correctly, you could see how the divot there is, is more shallow. Uh, it's not as bad as, as the previous one. And this is a brand new safety valve here. You can see it's practically flat. Uh, so on this old one, this valve here, you can see how, how bad that is. It has already been replaced. Uh, it actually failed. Uh, they describe this as a fusible alloy, and it just has a, a much lower melting point than uh, the other material, the stainless. So when it goes, uh, it will release the steam out the sides. It won't come at you if you're nearby it because the handle will block it. But because it's extremely hot, uh, if you don't have enough water in the cooker or if the valve has been blocked and the steam has not been able to be released, that metal will heat up and melt and it initially will just will blow out the sides and fusible alloy is very correct because that hot metal will then stick to the top of your lid there's still little little shreds of that onto this lid here so uh, it's not a dangerous thing uh, I, I would assume it would cool pretty rapidly uh, but that's probably why you want to keep up on these and make sure that they're replaced. Uh, the tools that you'll need, I found that a 17 millimeter wrench works really well for the top part. What I mean by the top part is this 
nut. Uh, the valve and the this is a compression washer here and that's very important every time you replace these you want to put the new one on because that's what will create the seal and this top goes on the top of the lid and that uh, is a 17 millimeter works really well for For that one and you will need a wrench for this not gonna be able to get a socket in okay and then on the other side what you're gonna want to use is a deep socket and I have an 11 16 deep socket here this is an overkill here this is a impact socket uh, and a very heavy-duty ratchet um, you could use a half inch ratchet if you needed to. Um, I just like to use this. It's actually the only 11 16 deep socket that I have. But it also allows you to get a good amount of torque when you're tightening this down. So those are the tools that you need. You need 11 16. You need a deep socket because the smaller ones won't, uh, won't really fit on there well. Uh, because the hood, the lid there is sort of beveled, and uh, you don't really get a good connection on it. So, using a deep socket that makes that easier. Uh, to where to buy these? You can get these on Amazon. It's a good idea to buy three or four of them and keep them in, in a drawer somewhere um, as backups. They've gone to a lot of trouble putting a holographic seal on these packages. Uh, this Hawkings are made in India. I'm going to assume they're very popular there, and there's probably some knockoff versions. So you definitely want to get, uh, you can buy these on Amazon from Hawkings and or Hawkins, and uh, uh, that ensures that it's the correct size and uh, the alloy, fusible alloy, is at the right temperature. Okay, uh, that's pretty much all there is to replacing that. Definitely you want to tighten that down, put a lot of torque on it, and get it good and tight, and that will create the seal when that compression washer there, um, when you put enough torque that it, it will collapse. Yeah. That's it.